Sometimes, it seems like there is no information that isn't available somewhere online. As the web has grown, a simple Google or YouTube search is usually enough to find nearly any media, archived article, or any important document that one could ever want. But in this video, we'll be looking at pieces of recorded audio that, for various reasons, will never see the light of day. Some are lost, some destroyed, and some are in the possession of people who just do not want them to be heard. And again, just a warning, some of these stories I'll be talking about have very disturbing details and are, as they say, not for the faint of heart. So today, we're going to take a look at 11 lost audio clips, from fascinating to terrifying. The Japanese Cannibal Tapes In a truly bizarre case, Dutch college student Rene Hartbelt was murdered and partially eaten by a fellow student, Japanese native Issei Sagawa, in Paris in 1981. After luring her to his apartment, apparently to record her reading poetry, Sagawa shot Miss Hartbell in the back before using an electric knife to remove over 7 pounds of flesh from her body. He prepared himself several meals with this over the next few days and also shot video and audio, including of the murder itself, and took over three dozen pictures. Sagawa insisted at his trial that the act had been artistic, not criminal, and that he needed to eat his victim in order to absorb her power. Predictably, this defense resulted in his institutionalization in a French mental hospital for one year before being transferred to Japan. Sagawa was released in 1985 and unbelievably has become somewhat of a celebrity, authoring books, appearing on talk shows, and yes, reviewing restaurants. While the video and photo evidence of the crime was made public, and crime scene photos were published in Photos Magazine in 1983, the cassette from Sagawa's audio recorder has never been unearthed. It may be in police custody, or just simply lost. Chris Farley as Shrek DreamWorks Studios' animated film Shrek was a surprise hit in 2001, while star Mike Myers eventually settled on a sort of Scottish accent for the voice of the character, this was not the first interpretation. Not only had Myers partially recorded a different version with no accent, but at least 80% of all of Shrek's dialogue had been recorded previously by Chris Farley, the first actor cast in the role. Farley was a huge star when he was cast in 1996, coming off a successful run on late night comedy institution Saturday Night Live, as well as a string of popular feature films. In the few minutes that are available from his original performance online, set the storyboards of the film's corresponding scenes, it's apparent that his performance was perfectly deadpan, essentially playing himself in the form of a big green ogre. And Farquaad said he'd give me my own swamp in exchange for the princess. You really think you can trust that Weasley oil rag, don't you? Hmm, yeah, right. But now I'm gonna have what he wants. The storyboards even suggest that Shrek may have looked a bit different if Farley's performance had been used. After Chris Farley's untimely death in 1997, the role was handed to fellow SNL alumni Myers, and it of course has become one of his most beloved and recognizable roles in the years to come. Chris Farley's full performance as Shrek has never been leaked online, and likely sits undiscovered somewhere in the archives of DreamWorks. The Watergate Tapes Perhaps the most famous lost audio clip of all time, the Watergate Tapes refers to a series of taped conversations had by then-President Richard Nixon with various advisors concerning the growing Watergate scandal. After a break-in at the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee, a pair of Washington Post reporters followed the story all the way to the highest office in the land. It became apparent that Nixon had ordered that break-in and the bugging of political opponents and the scandal eventually led to Nixon's resignation, the first and only time a U.S. president has resigned. Nixon was in the habit of recording most of his conversations, whether in person in the Oval Office or on the phone. While over 200 hours of audio would be released to the public, much of it incriminating, one blank, 18-minute section of tape has confounded the public for years, and has led to endless speculation. Nixon claims the stretch of tape was erased by an assistant, and has never clarified what it may have contained. 
while likely just more incriminating material having to do with Watergate, conspiracy theorists have posited that everything from secret deals with terrorists to plans for war with the Soviet Union may have been discussed. Samantha Morton's performance in Her The 2013 Spike Jones film Her was a critically acclaimed hit. It was nominated for several Academy Awards including Best Picture, taking home an Oscar for Best Screenplay. In it, a lonely man played by Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with an artificially intelligent operating system named Samantha, voiced by Scarlett Johansson. The character may, however, have been named for the first actress to be cast in the role, Samantha Morton. The entire film was shot with Morton's recorded dialogue, and she was even on set to help develop the chemistry between her and Phoenix. While Jones felt the performance was satisfactory, he is a notorious perfectionist, and decided virtually at the last minute to recast the role with Johansson. This was done with Morton's blessing, and while rumors have abounded of portions of the film or even trailers containing Morton's performance, there are none to be found online. And since this is Spike Jones we're talking about here, it is more than likely that the performance has been deleted. An entire alternate cast recording of Hoodwinked. Similarly, the 2005 animated film Hoodwinked, a modernized update of the Little Red Riding Hood story, had last minute changes made to its vocal performances. In a far more severe case than our previous entry, however, this wasn't just a single actress performance that was thrown out. Virtually the entire cast, comprised largely of veteran voice actors, was replaced. The problem, as the filmmaker saw it, wasn't the quality of the performances but the star power of the actors. While highly regarded in the industry, voice actors are by definition heard and not seen. Only Patrick Warburton, the voice of Joe Swanson on Family Guy, and Andy Dick inexplicably kept their roles. The rest, including lead Tara Strong, who has literally voiced more popular characters than we have time to recount here, were replaced with more high profile celebrities with the lead going to Anne Hathaway. While perhaps rightly seen by some as a shady move, the gambit seemed to work. Hoodwinked was a significant box office success, despite middling reviews and the fact that it's, well, not very good. The Murder of Leslie Ann Downey Ian Brady and Myra Hindley, dubbed The Moore's Murderers by British media, perpetrated one of the most horrifying crimes of the 20th century in 1964. The couple lured 10-year-old Leslie Ann Downey from a fairground to their home where she was to be tortured, sexually assaulted, and even murdered. In addition to nine obscene photographs taken by Brady, a 13-minute audio tape was recovered by law enforcement, which was eventually played for stunned spectators at the couple's criminal trial. In it, the little girl repeatedly begs to be released, as she is being tied up in advance of the first sexual assault. In this case, it is known exactly where the tape is, in the custody of the British courts, who have made it clear that they have no intention of ever releasing it. A transcript of the tape made by a court stenographer does exist, and was published in a book about the trial in 1986. Vincent Price as Santa in The Nightmare Before Christmas Producer Tim Burton's stop-motion 1993 masterpiece, The Nightmare Before Christmas, has become an enduring, if somewhat unlikely, holiday classic. Featuring a brilliant Danny Elfman score and excellent lead voice work by Chris Sarandon and Catherine O'Hara, the film's cross-pollination of Halloween and Christmas tropes and imagery gave it a unique blend of fright and whimsy. In this vein, one particularly brilliant piece of casting was made, which, unfortunately, was not meant to be. Character actor Edward Ivory portrayed Santa Claus in the final version of the film, but the role originally went to none other than horror icon Vincent Price. The man is known for his distinct voice in horror media, and it would have definitely given the jovial Santa a more creepy vibe. At the time, Price was in declining health after the recent death of his wife. His once formidable voice was a shadow of its former self, and the vocal tracks that he recorded for the film were deemed unusable, to the deep regret of director Henry Selleck. While acknowledged by the production company, the recordings have never been heard in any public form, and it's unknown whether they still exist.
Captain Killdozer's Manifesto In June of 2004, international headlines were made when a Colorado man unveiled a project that he had been working on for about a year and a half. Not a backyard deck or a treehouse, but a fully armored, steel and concrete reinforced Kamatsu bulldozer with which he intended to cause as much chaos as possible. The man's name was Marvin Hemeyer, but Colorado residents tend to refer him as Captain Killdozer. Hemeyer's rampage was the result of a zoning dispute with the city of Granby, and among the sites he targeted for demolition were the house of the former mayor and Granby's town hall. He had initially purchased the bulldozer in an attempt to resolve the dispute by creating an alternate route to his muffler shop, the last compromise in a long line of them that were rejected by the city. When that failed, he came up with a different plan for his purchase. Hemeyer destroyed 13 buildings, all connected in some way to his dispute, and caused over $7 million in damage in just over two hours. When the bulldozer became stuck in a basement, he shot himself in the head, committing suicide. Shortly before the rampage, he had mailed over two hours of audio tapes to his brother in South Dakota, outlining his plan and motives. The brother turned the tapes over to the FBI, who eventually returned them to the Grand County Sheriff's Office, which is where they essentially disappeared. The Sheriff's Office claims that they've been released, but they're nowhere to be found. The original voice actor in the Spider-Man video game Sam Raimi's 2002 film Spider-Man had the effect of making what was already an extremely hot property even hotter. The film destroyed box office records on its opening weekend and single-handedly proved the viability of the emerging superhero film genre. Among fans of comic books, animated films, and video games, Spidey had long been an icon, with Activision's 2000 game being a top seller on the PC and PlayStation platforms. And to especially those fans who had loved this game, Spider-Man was Josh Keaton. Josh Keaton had voiced Peter Parker in the critically acclaimed animated series The Spectacular Spider-Man, as well as previous games and other media, and would go on to continue voicing the character for years afterward, except for the tie-in game to Raimi's film. After already recording all of the dialogue, Keaton was replaced when actor Tobey Maguire, who played Spider-Man in the movie, became available to do voiceover work. While Keaton's original audio is lost forever, snatches of it survived in an unlockable version of the game. Keaton was recast as Harry Osborne, and in this version, players can play as Harry as the Green Goblin. Which is a little odd since Harry's father Norman was the Green Goblin in the film. The Birotron Sound Library with the advent of synthesizers in the late 1960s and early 70s, the soundscape of popular music was changed forever. Many earlier machines boasted a mix of analog and digital technology, such as the Mellotron, which used pre-recorded tape loops to produce its sounds. A similar unit was the Birotron, produced as a low-cost alternative to the Mylotron units, which were prohibitively expensive for all but major recording studios. Unlike the Mellotron, which used standard tapes that could only sustain a note for a maximum of 8 seconds, the Birotron used 8 track tapes, which allowed for a looped song to be sustained indefinitely. Dozens of popular artists, from Elton John to Led Zeppelin, have used the Birotron unit in recordings, and an entire library of sounds was created. One set, based on a church organ, was actually recorded by legendary keyboardist for the band Yes, Rick Wakeman. Today, the Birotron is considered to be one of the rarest keyboards in existence. Less than 50 units were made, and of the few that still exist, many are no longer functional. It is believed that no single unit exists without an undamaged, fully functional sound library. Death of the Grizzly Man Timothy Treadwell was an environmentalist and documentary filmmaker who had spent 13 summers in Katmai National Park, studying grizzly bears. A noted bear enthusiast, he was the founder of Grizzly People, an organization devoted to protecting the animals, which makes this all even more disturbing. In October of 2003, Treadwell and his girlfriend experienced their final bear encounter in the same national park where Treadwell had spent so many months. As their video camera rolled, the couple was attacked and killed by a 28-year-old brown bear, 
which then proceeded to partially eat the remains. Fortunately, the lens cap was still on the camera at the time, but this did not prevent it from recording audio of the event with perfect clarity. The tape and the camera were given to Treadwell's ex-girlfriend, who has said she has never listened to it and never will. Acclaimed filmmaker Werner Herzog produced a well-received documentary about Treadwell in 2005 entitled Grizzly Man. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook. No, wait. Don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for everything like news and updates regarding my channel. And of course, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more.